video, we'll be looking at the control of insulin secretion by the beta cells. Now, insulin is a hormone released by the beta cells uh, and they can decrease our blood glucose level after, let's say, a meal or any sort of high, uh, any situation that lead to a high blood glucose level. And the way that beta cells can do that is because they are the ones that actually detect the high levels of glucose in the bloodstream and then they uh, secrete the hormone depending on what's going, uh, depending on how much glucose there would be. So in the case, if in this case, we'll look at two different situations when there is a low glucose level and there's a high glucose level. So first of all, let's look at the resting state, or which is basically when they have a low blood glucose level. So first of all, let's have a look at the different structures of a beta cell. So here on the left hand side, we've got a glucose transporter, which is basically a protein carrier or co-transporter that can move glucose into uh, the cell. And here we've got ATP sensitive potassium ion channel. So as the name implies, they are sensitive towards ATP, meaning if ATP is present, they would change their structure. Now in the case of a resting state or having a low blood glucose level, these channels are open, which means that any potassium ions that, are, that is in the cell can actually diffuse out of the cell. And this is relying on the concept of uh, maintaining a resting potential uh, of the membrane or across the membrane. So as usual, the resting potential is minus 70 millivolts. And here on the right hand side, we've got uh, the voltage gated calcium ion channels. So in this case, they are closed. So as the name implies, it's uh, controlled, this opening is controlled by a change in the potential difference across the membrane. So when, uh, in certain situations, when uh, the membrane is depolarized, they would sense that depolarization and open to allow an influx of calcium ions. So the moment there is a relatively positive charge on the outside of the membrane compared to inside of the membrane. And here we've got a mitochondria as well, or mitochondrion. Obviously inside the cell there will be more than one. And here we've got insulin vesicles or we call them secretory vesicles with insulin in them. So during resting state, when there is uh, not a lot of glucose in the bloodstream, the ATP sensitive potassium ion channels would remain open to allow uh, the potassium ions to diffuse out, maintaining the membrane at a resting potential of minus 70 millivolts. The voltage gated calcium ion channels are closed during that time. So obviously things would change when there is a high glucose level. So let's have a look and see what happens. So namely, I've split this up into six different stages. So first of all is when there's a higher blood glucose level, the beta cells will be able to detect that. And the way they do that is because they've got a glucose transporter. Therefore, uh, that when there's a lot of glucose there, the glucose can actually be moved into the beta cells by the glucose transporters. Now, once they are here, they can actually be metabolized by the mitochondria. And when, by that, they can produce ATP through uh, aerobic respiration in the mitochondria. Now, remember we talked about how the potassium ion channels are actually sensitive to the level of ATP inside the cell. And the way that it does is that ATP actually, a high level of that would inhibit the opening of the potassium ion channels. So actually having loads of ATP inside the beta cells that they would actually cause the potassium ion channels to close. And if they close, that means the uh, potassium ions cannot diffuse out of the cell anymore. So what happens is that previously there was a low level of potassium ions on the inside because they keep moving out. And in this case, there is a buildup of potassium ions inside the cell and that will cause the membrane to depolarize from minus 70 millivolts to about minus 30 millivolts. And because of this depolarization, that will cause the voltage-gated calcium ion channels to open. The calcium ions can actually move into the cell. And because of the influx of calcium ions, the uh, insulin vesicles will move and fuse with the membrane, releasing the insulin by exocytosis. So to summarize, in a case of a higher blood glucose level, the glucose transporter on the beta cell would move the glucose into the beta cell. The glucose is then metabolized by the mitochondria through aerobic respiration to make ATP. The increased level of ATP inside the beta cell, meaning that ATP can bind to the potassium ion channels, closing them and stopping the potassiums from leaving the cell. This will cause the membrane to depolarize from minus 70 to minus 30 millivolts. 
Therefore, because of this depolarization, the voltage gated calcium ion channels would open, causing a calcium ion influx. When the calcium ions get into the cell, they would cause the secretory vesicles to move and fuse with the plasma membrane and hence releasing the insulin by exocytosis and the insulin can then cause the various effects to decrease the blood glucose level again. And once there is less glucose in the bloodstream, obviously the glucose stop coming into the beta cells, there won't be as many ATP made, the potassium ion channels can reopen to re-establish their resting potential. And this is the control of insulin secretion by the beta cells.